So the weekly candle closed here and it is the first red week that we've seen in the last month or so. You can see that we ended up being down 10.43% on the week. And we've started this week down about 3%. Remember that the reasons for this red week was due to the overbought conditions in the market as well as the bearish divergence in the chart. And we covered all of this not only last week, but the week prior to that. So now we are going into week two of this current correction. You will notice that more and more panic will begin the longer this correction lasts. Remember guys, these corrections and consolidation periods are meant to mentally exhaust you and shake you out of your positions before the next move up. So stay strong guys. Today we will look at the charts and see what we can possibly expect this week. Now, remember that this week in the US, it is a holiday, Thanksgiving. So because of that on Thursday, the stock market will be closed. And on Friday, the stock market closes earlier than usual. Usually it closes at four o'clock. On Friday, it will be closing at one o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So because of that, we can expect lower volumes and less trading this week than, you know, the average week. But the other thing that we do have this week as well on Friday is the option expiration contracts, which usually brings in some volatility into the Bitcoin market. So we will cover all of that today. Let's dive into today's analysis. Hey, what's up? Jay here and welcome to Bitcoin Daily, bringing you guys the best tips, tutorials and ideas to help you guys become profitable and successful investors. The goal of this channel is to empower you, the community, with the knowledge and resources to take your wealth up to that next level. So if you guys are new here, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on the notifications. Also, if you enjoy the video, smash that like button. And if you have any questions, of course, drop it in the comments. Let's jump into today's video. All right, guys. So first of all, let's take a look here at the weekly chart since we have a new candle this for this week and the one for last week finally closed. As you guys can see, we were down about 10 and a half percent. And so far this week, we're down almost 4% here as price continues to push lower currently right now. You will notice that in the range that we're currently at, we were here previously back in uh, February all the way throughout May. This was basically the resistance area here where we got rejected from. And then, of course, we had the big drop off there. So this time around, we've broken above that area and we've closed above it as well. So now this zone, I believe, is a support zone. So that same zone that before was a resistance. Now we've flipped it into a support. As long as we stay above this 52 to $53,000 area, I believe that we are good. I'm not really too worried about any of the consolidation that we might see here. We have a lot of support down here. Even if I bring up the volume shelves here, you can see that we have a lot of support there. There's a lot of activity in that range where the drop off is, is if we fall below that $53,000 area, then there's kind of a drop off to about $48,000. That's why as long as we hold above 53, we're not too worried about it. If we do drop below that, then it is a cause for some concern because we will lose not only all this activity here that's been holding us up this volume shelf here, but we will lose this important Fibonacci level that's been holding us up here as well. And we will fall into that next level, which is this right here. Remember, we spoke about this in the past. So the bottom of this range, if we were to fall to this level, we're, we're looking back at that $42,000, $43,000 bottom. And then the top of it is going to be right at that $53,000 mark. So again, very, very important for us to stay above 53. As long as we stay above 53, I'm not worried. It's just a another normal correction and the outlook is still good. We can still easily bounce back and get back to all time highs at that point. 
So if we jump into the daily chart here, you will see that we've continued to, to get rejected right here. So there's two things there. One is that 50 day moving average, which we've been rejected at ever since we lost it. And the second thing is this descending line right here, as you guys can see. So those two things are, are have been rejecting us as well as of course, we have a resistance at $60,000. You can see how here it's been able to it held as a support. It was a very strong support. And now here it's holding as a very strong resistance. If we were to continue lower here, the main support that we're looking at is, of course, 53,000, as we mentioned earlier. And that's also more or less around that target where I gave you guys two weeks ago when we spotted the bearish divergence. And I said we could be possibly looking at a 25% a pullback here in the next coming weeks. Now on Friday's video, we, we did a little bit of calculation based on the history of last time we saw the same type of bearish divergence. So if you guys recall, we dropped 25% during this bearish divergence pullback. So far, we're down about 19 and a half percent this time around. Remember that it took about 25% less time than the last time to see the drop once the bearish divergence began. So we took that into consideration when trying to figure out when we will see the next impulse move to the upside. So last time it took us 23 days before we saw that impulse move to the upside. So this time around, we took in the consideration for those 23 days. We subtracted 25% to make it 25% less, which gave us about 17 days. Since, of course, remember that it took us 25% less time for the drop to come around this time. So now when looking at the 17 days, it gave us a date of December 1st. Okay, the beginning of the next month, it makes sense, right? However, when we looked at the calendar here, December 1st is a Wednesday. So kind of a random in the middle of the week day. So instead, what we did, we went back and looked at the chart to see more or less when this next move up began we saw that it was on the 29th. So if we look at the 29th here in September, you will see that it's also on a Wednesday. All right, so I don't know what it is about Wednesdays, but you'll notice here on September on the 22nd, we had a almost 7% move to the upside. And then the Wednesday after that on the 29th, this was the beginning of the next leg up here. So last video, I actually made a mistake here because I was looking at the October calendar. So I put 12 days and the reason that I put 12 days was because on the 26th, it's the options expiration contract days. So I was thinking maybe on the 26th, it's more likely that we see a move up rather than a Wednesday. But now that we look back into actually September, we will see that on the on two Wednesdays in a row on the second in the back half after this bearish divergence, it is when we got movements to the upside. So if we take the 23 days, subtract 25% from it, it gives us 17 days. That date is on December 1st, December 1st is a Wednesday. If we look back at the previous one, you see that its next move up started on September 29th. September 29th was a Wednesday. And you'll see that even the week before on September 22nd was also a Wednesday. So I don't know what it is about Wednesdays, but potentially that's when we could see the beginning of the next move up. Now in the last video, I was a little confused with the dates and I gave you guys on Friday, which is the 26th as a day that we could possibly get that next move up. Reason behind that thought is due to the fact that option expirations end on that day. So of course, these are all just predictions based on, you know, what I've seen previously, you know, previous data. But I definitely think that sometime between the 26th and the 1st, we should see a move up at some point. I think that we close the month off strong and we start December off strong as well. So, I mean, at this point, we just gotta see what happens. All right, so looking at some trade setups that we will be watching here, the first one that we're going to be looking at is above 60. Now, this is a thing with 60. There's a lot of resistance in that area, so you have to be very careful if you're taking it, only risking about 1%. However, when we do break above there, you can expect the prices to run rather quickly 
up potentially straight to 62 straight to 65 we get above that then straight to the previous all-time high now another possible entry is 58 but 58 is now very close to this resistance as well so again you have to use caution using that that entry if we continue down 55 is a possible bounce back entry if we go under it and bounce back above it and the final entry is probably going to be around 53 52 thousand dollars in that range again you have to be very careful only risking one percent on all of these thank you guys so much for watching this video if you guys enjoyed it don't forget to smash the like button on the video also don't forget to subscribe to the channel turn on notifications if you have any questions about anything we covered today drop it in the comments i'm always happy to answer you guys let's see how this week goes i'll keep updating you guys throughout the week make sure to follow us on our socials bitcoin.daily on instagram and bitcoin x daily on twitter I'll see you guys on the next one. As always, peace and love.